Good evening, Canby Foursquare. Pastor Mark Smith here. It is great to be with you. We are headed into Easter Sunday. What a great time for the church locally here in Canby, globally around the world. We are excited for the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, it is my great honor that I get to bring you the Good Friday service. And it has been a blessing of mine since last year. And Pastor Ron said, hey, would you uh, please do the message last year? And it was a great honor. And I get to be back again with you this year. And once again, it is my joy to be with you. Today, we're gonna be looking at a passage from John chapter 19, verse 30. And we're looking at one phrase. It's where Jesus, he's on the cross, and it's a series of, a, of points that Jesus makes. It's a series of discussion points that Jesus will have with various people from the cross. Jesus will uh, have a discussion with the thieves on the cross at one point, and he will talk to them at another point. He'll look down and he'll have a discussion with his mother, his disciples, uh, with the, the Roman guards that are there with him. And this is the conversation that we see that happens at the very end where Jesus says, I thirst. And they, they come and they give him the vinegar hyssop uh, branch mixture and he takes it. And then he says, it is finished. And he breathes his last. And when you think of the phrase, it is finished, you can think of many different uh, situations of something being finished. And I know for me as a younger man, I did not like to finish things. I didn't like to finish projects. This is something that I've had to actually work on my whole life. You know, I get started on a project and uh, get halfway through and lose interest. Or early on, I would read a lot of books halfway and then I would leave them open-ended. And that was the story of my life. And the Lord has really worked on me over the years to, to finish things, to bring things to completion. So this phrase, it is finished, that has become a source of great joy to me in my own personal life. But what we're looking at here today isn't a project that we finished or that I can finish or that you finish. It's something that Jesus finished. Now the, the phrase here, it is finished, it's three little words for us in our English Bible. But in the original language, it's one word, to die. To die. Go ahead. Give it a try. To tell us die. It's kind of a fun word. Uh, you can use it at your next Scrabble meet. It's a fun triple word score. To tell us die is this phrase that is used uh, in the court of law or an accounting term. And what it means is that the balance is paid or paid in full. Can you think of a time where something's been paid in full in your own life? I know for me that. I recently had uh, a college loan that over the years I was just paying on and paying on and paying on and you write the check and then eventually one day you get that notice that says that the balance is zero, that it's been paid. Or this happened to us not too long ago with uh, a car situation. We need a new car and we didn't have the money for it. We went to the bank. We got a little extra money for a minivan of all things. And we used our minivan and we tried to put money away and add a payment here and there and we got chunks of money, pay it off. And, and I remember getting that notice in the mail, getting the title in hand and it says, it's zero. You owe no more on your minivan. You own it all. The balance has been paid, paid in full. But what we're looking at today is a little bit different. It isn't something that I can do, it's not something that you can do, it's something that's been done for you, for no real reason other than kindness. Um, could you imagine if today you got a phone call, hey Mr. So-and-so, your MasterCard, your Visa, your American Express bill, it's been paid in full. We're having a meeting with the executives and we just thought that you would be a good candidate to have your bills paid, so we just paid it off. Or for my family, we just recently purchased our, our home. What if the mortgage company just called and said, Hey, Mr. Smith, we just want you to know 
you've been paying on this house for a year and we saw that you had 29 more to go. We decided to erase that debt. We don't want you to have to keep paying on that. How exciting would that be? I would say that that is grounds for celebration. Because what happened is somebody gave me something that I didn't do anything for. Somebody gave me something and there was this victory that was had for something I didn't do, I didn't participate, it was just done for me. And today, as we celebrate Good Friday, as we look at the, the finished work at the cross, it is finished looks a lot different than we might think. It is finished isn't just a man on a cross that breathes his last, but it is actually a battle cry. It is finished to tell us that the debt has been paid. And whose debt? That's our debt. Our debt has been paid. What we see happening in the book of John, in John chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus is there on the cross, getting ready to breathe his last, and he looks down and he says, it is finished. Now what is being finished? It is bringing to completion the Old Testament from Genesis to Malachi. All the prophecies that have been spoken about Jesus, all 300 prophecies that were fulfilled in the life of Christ, the, the, from his life to his death to his burial and resurrection, the prophecy from Genesis in the beginning where God said, I, through the seed of the woman, I will send the one, I will send that one who will crush the head of Satan, sin, and death. The one who brought sin and death, Satan, his head will be crushed. I will send him through the seed of the woman. All the way to Isaiah. Remember Isaiah 53, a very specific prophecy about the suffering servant. A servant, a king like no other. Like people could not imagine this. Isn't it going to be this conquering king that rides in on a battle horse and, and comes in with a strong army? But Isaiah 53 points to a very specific kind of Messiah, a very specific kind of anointed one that nobody could have seen coming. This is what Jesus is saying, it is finished. The prophecies that spoke of me, they have been fulfilled. The suffering servant is here in his suffering, being fulfilled. The kingdom that you were thinking was gonna come through through King David and the return of King David, it is here. That Jesus is saying the fulfillment of the whole Old Testament has now been fulfilled on the cross. And what he's saying is the debt has been paid for our sin. Back in Genesis chapter 1 through 3, we see that's the beginning of humanity. We see there's the fall where Adam and Eve fell into sin and they went their own way. And God steps in and he says that he will fix this. A problem that God didn't create, that God didn't start, he steps in and he says, I will fix it. And so Jesus is the finishing work of what happened in the garden. Now, when we think of Good Friday, think about the disciples. Think about the disciples that are there, sitting there on the cross. They would have seen this as anything but good. Have you ever had a bad day? Have you ever seen something that is this hard and come up in your life that you never expected? And then when you look back, you see that the Lord's hand was in it all along. And the, the same is true here for the enemies of Jesus. They saw Jesus hanging on the cross as a great victory. They saw their problem had been solved. For the soldiers that are there, piercing Jesus' side, nailing him to a cross, beating him, it's just another day of work, just another day in the office. They were just doing what they were supposed to do. But for those who are followers, those who were disciples of Jesus, this is the worst imaginable day. This is a day where we put all of our trust all of our hope into this man and now he's hanging there and he breathes his last and he says it is finished in a book 
It's called Idols for Destruction. Herbert Salzberg, he says this, the Christian life can be interpreted as a string of God triumphs disguised as disasters. Let me say that again. The Christian life can be interpreted as a string of God's triumphs disguised as disasters. Jesus Christ's greatest victory and, and, and his continued great victories often come disguised, often come disguised as disasters. For the disciples this day, it was a disaster. They did not see this coming. But this is not a cry of defeat. It is finished. It is not the church is finished. It is not Jesus is finished. It is a shout of victory. It is a shout of hope. We, as New Testament Christians, we get to see the full story. We know that it's Good Friday, but Sunday is coming. That our hope is coming. We celebrate that what happened in the garden, Jesus finished on the cross of Calvary. What does this mean for you? What's this mean for me, for us, for we? It means that Christ has began a work in us and through us, and he's going to complete it. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, it says it like this. The good work that God began in you, he will bring it to completion. The cry of Tetelestai, it is finished, isn't just a cry of what happened on the cross. It is a lifestyle that we live victorious in Christ. That the things of this world, the sufferings of this world, the trials that we are going through, that we still can trust in the tetelestai, the finished work of the gospel today in our life. That he who began a good work in you, Christ who started this good work in you, he will bring it to completion. He's not done with you. That the hope of the resurrection on Good Friday is the hope of what is coming on Sunday. I want us to know today, church, and I pray that wherever you are, whatever you're going through, that the hope of the finished work of Christ, that that rings true today in your own life, where you are. That Christ, what happened to Christ on that cross, on that cross, that Christ took your place. I've heard it said like this, on the cross, Jesus was treated as if he lived our sinful life. That on that cross, Jesus was treated as if he lived the sin that we have, have committed. So that when God sees us, it's as if we live the life that Christ lived. When Adam and Eve, they exchanged a truth for a lie in the garden. Jesus came on the cross of victory and he exchanged our sinfulness for his righteousness. And church, this Sunday is coming. Our hope, we celebrate Good Friday because we know that Sunday is coming. We know that our God, he is not dead, that he is alive and that he's ruling and reigning from his kingdom and he rules the kingdoms of this world. So today, would you be filled with hope? Wherever you are, whatever life situation you're in, would the gospel be bigger than that? Wherever you are in your life right now, whatever you're going through, would the cross of Christ be bigger? Church, I thank you that you would let me be here with you. It is my great honor and blessing to bring us the word today from John chapter 19, verse 30. It is finished as a victory cry of Christ. Bless you.